Hi, I'm Travis Vermilia, and today I want to talk to you about a project that I'm working on uh, that I'm calling Colorado Coral. And so I've created these shapes from my laser cutter. I have a Glowforge, pretty simple laser cutter. And I'm creating these shapes out of recycled materials. Uh, they sort of originally started off because I had this copper form that's uh, poured copper into like an ant mound, which is really cruel, but they make really cool shapes. And I thought, oh, can I generate something like that uh, that feels like a specimen and from my computer? And so I created these, these shapes um, that I will be using to create further art projects from. And so I want to show you today just how I made this initial uh, shape in Cinema 4D. And so I'm going to use X particles and the cell auto feature. So I'm going to go into X particles here and make a new system. So that gives me my emitter. And the first thing I want to do is come into my generator and I'm going to choose cell auto, which is the second option down. Cell auto comes in default with this diffusion limited aggregation mode. And there are lots of different kinds of modes in there, or three different ones. Uh, and you can play around with those and see what they do but I just want to sort of show you what I do uh, initially. So if I hit play right now, it's just going to shoot my regular emitter in there because I haven't told cell auto to use that emitter. So I have to grab the one that it created, drag it down here in the emitter frame or the emitter uh, slot. And now you can see that it's actually generating something, but it's a little hard to see. And so I want to be able to see those particles better. So I'm going to go into my emitter and go to display and tell it instead of dots, just go ahead and use circles. And so now it's going to generate those circles and give you a better idea of what it's creating. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, I think, just because the cells are so large. So let's go ahead and shrink them down by half. So I made them five. Now you can see that it's sort of generating these branches, right? So the, it's generating a, an initial seed particle that's then uh, growing out and making more particles that are connected to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one more step down. So we've got four. So I've got a 400 by 400 by 10 centimeter uh, space that's being uh, used as a generation section. And right now it's coming from the center. I kind of want these to grow from the bottom up, right? So if you take a look at these uh, shapes, they feel like they're growing from the bottom up. And so let's go ahead and say bottom center for our starting point. So I'm just going to keep letting this play through so you uh, can see what's happening when I make changes. Um, right now the seed is playing a big role. So like anything in Cinema 4D, the seed is the random generator. So if I change this down to zero or something like that, it's going to change the shape completely. Right. So every time I change this seed from zero to one to two, I'm going to get a completely new form that's being generated. So I think that one's looking pretty cool. Uh, just quickly, it is using what's called walkers to generate these. And so essentially the less or fewer walkers you have, the fewer branches you're gonna be getting, building out, um, put that back to 20. And the fewer walker steps, sort of the less distance they're going to travel, the more walker steps, uh, the farther distance they're going to travel and so I'll just go ahead and keep that where it was. Um, you can play around with stickiness and see what that does. It's at 100% now, put it down to zero. They kind of just like sit in one little spot. So more stickiness me means more growing. And so uh, you can come up with a formula that you like or a look that you like, and then sort of just keep changing the seed and that'll give you a new one and a new one and a new one. So it's kind of a nice uh, feature. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the default. So that's the cell auto and how it initially grows the shape. Now, right now, I don't have anything to render, so I want to create something that I can render. So I'm going to go into the generator here, and I'm going to use the OVDB mesher. So OVDB mesher will wrap a mesh around something that I tell it to wrap around. And in this case, I want to wrap it around the emitter. You might think the cell auto is what you're going to drag in there, but the emitter is what's actually generating the particle. So right now it's wrapping a mesh around those particles as it generates them, but it's a huge radius. So 
Let's go ahead and change that down to something like two. And when I do that, now you can see that it is actually generating a shape that looks very, very much like a coral. Uh, so that's kind of what I was looking for. But there are some things that I still want to modify with this. And one of the things I want to modify is the voxel size. So uh, right now I want, I want to have a little bit more refined detail. So I'm going to change that down to two. And when I do that, you can see you have more spherical sort of shapes that actually represent the size of that point radius. So if I change it up or down even to one, that mesh is holding up now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at two. Um, and then I'm going to think now, what do I want to have happen? I, I want to have the, the ends or the tips of these branches being a little smaller so they don't feel like everything's exactly the same size. And to do that, I need to uh, make some manipulations to the way uh, the scale is being uh, generated. So I'm going to go into my modifiers, make a new control modifier, and it's going to be a scale modifier. And when I do that, you can see now it's almost like we sprayed that expandable foam down, and it's just sort of growing. Uh, and it's growing up to an upper limit radius of 20. If I change that down to something smaller, like 4, it's going to stop when it gets to 4. If you're not seeing a whole lot of growth, just briefly I'm going to turn off the OVDB mesher so that we can see what the particles are actually doing. So you can actually see them growing, right? But they're starting not at zero, but at three. So why is that? This says lower radius of zero. Why isn't it starting at zero? The reason is if we look at our emitter, uh, when these are initially being emitted, they're actually emitting at a radius of three. So I need to change that setting down to zero. And once I've done that, now you can see that they are actually starting at zero and they are going up to uh, the setting of four where I set it in my scale. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn our mesher back on and now you can see that the end pieces of the tips are growing much more slowly now, right? And they're smaller and, and they look kind of the way I, liked, I wanted them to look. One thing that's happening right now is the radius is changing a little faster than I want it to. So this radius change value is telling me uh, how fast it's going to change. If that's a bigger number, it's going to change really fast. If that's a smaller number, negative is actually nothing. So let's do 0 0.05. Right? So 0 0.05, now we're getting this growth out. And they're growing pretty slow. So slow, in fact, that I'm going to have to add some more frames to my scene which is not a big deal. But now I can see this growth happening as I sort of like it. And I can just stop it whenever I want to. So I'll just let it go through till I like it. Looks pretty good, stop. And this is sort of the shape that I'm gonna work from. Now I wanna do a couple more things before I get to the rendering component of this. And just to be clear, what we're gonna be doing here is creating a black and white image from this that I will use then to generate the vector shapes that I can send over to the laser cutter. And so the first thing I want to do is set up some smoothing. So the OVDB mesher has uh, some filters. So if I click on this filters section here, click on use filters, you can see it already smooth right away because it comes with a default median filter. I don't want to use that one. I'm going to go ahead and there's a lot of different um, algorithms in here you can use or mathematical formulas. So I'm going to use Gaussian. Uh, I like the way that that uh, looks right away. It feels more like sort of leafy or some, it feels organic and sort of like vegetation. And so you can control the amount and strength uh, just by dragging this slider up. So you can get it to feel smoothed, but not too smooth. Uh, if you feel like it needs even more, you can change the iterations up and it'll do it more and more. And then you can control the width as well. So, um, good to play around with to get exactly the look you're looking for. I think this looks pretty good. I'm just going to say 50% and one iteration. I kind of like the way that feels. And then my final output for this is going to be a black and white image like I mentioned before. So I'm just going to use the standard Cinema 4D uh, render engine. And so let's go ahead and set up our render settings. We're going to go uh, inches and do a 12 by 12 and we'll go 300 DPI. So that'll give us a nice uh, high resolution image that I can then use to create my vector shape. 
And so I've got my output set, I'm, and uh, I'll go ahead and save out a TIFF, that'll be fine. And we're going to do current frame, that's great. Uh, I'll save it if directly from the picture viewer, so I don't need to set anything up additionally here. So you can see we've got our preview square. Let's go ahead and set up a camera. So we'll do our framing, we'll zoom in, get it looking about the way we want to. And then I will create a new camera and we'll look through that camera. So this will be our render camera. Uh, just a little trick, if you make a camera and you don't want it to get ever moved again, a nice thing you can do is uh, find the protection tag and throw it on there. And now you can no longer rotate or move your camera. You'll have to uncheck it and not be looking through it to be able to do that now. So a nice little trick. Uh, let's create some uh, materials. We're just going to use standard Cinema 4D materials. And what I want to do is uh, remove. Uh, I want to remove the color and the reflectance. So right now it has nothing. And I'm going to add in luminance. So this material is going to be called white. Bright white luminance. I'll go ahead and Command C V, Command Control C V if you're on a PC, uh, and I'll change this one to be black, and then change that color down to black. So now I've got a black material, a white material. Uh, what do I need now? I need a plane. So let's go ahead and make a plane. It's horizontal. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to face me. So let's go ahead and have it face me. Move it back a little bit. Hit T on my keyboard so I can scale it up. It just needs to be bigger than my uh, camera framing. Let's go ahead and throw that white material on that plane and the black material on our mesher shape. And so you can probably see what's happening now. We've got our shape that we're going to render out, and this is exactly what I want to render and what I will use to create the vector object for my laser cutter. So let's go ahead and Shift R, render that out. So you can see we've got this nice, smooth, very uh, organic, coral-like shape that we can now save as our image that we'll use uh, in our piece. So let's go ahead and save this. I'll put this here. And we'll call this Coral Vector Starter. Call it whatever you like. And so the next uh, videos will show you how we'll do the vector settings and then we'll take it downstairs and actually cut it out on the laser cutter. See you in the next one.